Well, 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 what do we have here? Perhaps you're looking to see if your sexual fantasy is common, or perhaps you're just here for your daily dose of psychology content. No? Yes? Well, either way, welcome. It can be difficult to discuss or even simply contemplate your sexual desires and fantasies. You may feel stressed or anxious, thinking some of your sexual fantasies or thoughts are taboo or unusual. But odds are, some of them may be more common than you think. And we're gonna dive deep into the most common sexual fantasies. Discussing them, that is, <laughs> from a psychological standpoint. Why do people have sexual fantasies? What's the reason? You may remember that there's a few reasons if you watch the first part in our most common sexual fantasy series. In part one, we discussed the results of a survey of over 4,000 Americans in a Psychology Today article by psychologist Justin LaMiller. The most reported reasons for participants in the survey were simply to experience sexual arousal. While 69.8% of Americans reported they had sexual fantasies because they were curious about different sensations and sexual experiences. Following that, participants reported having these fantasies to meet unfulfilled sexual needs, escape reality for a while, or to express or fulfill a socially taboo sexual desire. See, lots of people have seemingly taboo sexual fantasies, which is why it's important to discuss this topic. According to an article from Insider, evidence suggests that those who have sexual fantasies experience less anxiety and a greater sense of self-esteem. So what are these seemingly taboo thoughts? Well, here are three more of the most common sexual fantasies. Homoeroticism and gender bending. According to Insider, gender bending is when a person challenges societal expectations of their gender. Anyone, regardless of sexual orientation, can participate in gender bending. For example, someone participating in a drag show might be participating in gender bending. Some may get the term gender bending confused with transgenderism, but they're different. According to Insider, transgenderism is when someone has a gender identity or gender expression that differs from their assigned sex at birth. But what about homoeroticism? A 2019 paper published in Social Forces suggested that 3.6% to 4.1% of men and 7.6% to 9.5% of women reported having a level of romantic or sexual attraction to the same sex. Homoeroticism is another common sexual fantasy. It's when one has sex with or participates in sexual acts with someone of the same sex as them. You don't need to identify as queer or homosexual to fantasize or experience homoeroticism. It's quite common for heterosexual people to have this fantasy as well. An article from Insider explains that sexual desire is not an either or situation, nor does it define your sexual identity. For example, a heterosexual cisgender woman who is in a sexually fulfilling relationship with a cisgender man can still have fantasies about other women. Sex therapist and clinical social worker Deborah Fox believes sexuality is on a bell curve or spectrum. She explains to Insider that people might identify as straight, but they can have a little titillation about, you know, imagining or even engaging in same-sex sexual acts. Fox also adds that some heterosexual people do have sex with the same gender person occasionally. Having that homosexual fantasy, I don't think it necessarily means anything about their identity in and of itself. Romance. Perhaps one's most common sexual fantasy is a romantic evening with their partner. In the Miller's same survey, he found that 87% of gay and bisexual men and women, 88% of straight women, and 91% of straight men fantasize about their current romantic partner. It's common for many people to fantasize about romantic sex. What that means is different for each person. Romantic sex may mean a candlelit, passionate night with your lover or partner, or maybe tantric sex is often the focus of your romantic fantasies. Tantric sex is often a slower sexual experience that focuses on connection and the feeling of the experience overall, not focusing on orgasm as the main goal. Healthline explains that when you practice Tantra, you and your partner learn to be physically aware and spiritually present, feeding each other energy that continues to grow well after you've finished having sex. Healthline also adds that Tantra also allows you both to explore and expand all aspects of your personalities so that you begin to truly know the other person inside and out. Variety and novelty sex. Want a bit of adventure? Some people may want to spice things up in the bedroom or out of it. 
One common sexual fantasy is having sex in a new or exciting location. Under a waterfall? On a private plane? Okay, well, maybe some of those will have to stay fantasies, but maybe just not in the bedroom this time. Do keep in mind, in the United States, public sex is illegal, so some locations may just very well be in your fantasies. Some people may just want a bit of novelty or variety in their sex life. Trying out a new sexual activity, sexual position, or simply a new location are all common fantasies and desires. According to sex educator Cassandra Corrado with O School, the feeling of facing the unknown and trying something for the first time can give you a thrilling adrenaline kick. And for some people, arousal is connected to that feeling of adrenaline. So will you be mixing things up in or out of the bedroom? There's quite a lot of sexual fantasies out there, and these are just some of the most common ones. The most important thing to remember is that these sexual fantasies are often normal, and it's all right to fantasize and explore your sexual desires and interests. If you have a partner, it may also be a great idea to communicate your sexual fantasies to them. Why? It may just improve your sex life and relationship, according to a survey conducted by psychologist Ari Tuckman. Tuckman explains in an article for Psychology Today that those who were most satisfied with their relationships and sex lives and had the most frequent sex were also the most comfortable sharing their fantasies with their partner. Tuckman adds that these couples are doing a lot of things well, which makes it easy to feel safe with the vulnerable intimacy involved in sharing their most secret desires. Do you think you'll share your secrets in the bedroom with your partner? Or will your personal fantasies remain just that, personal? Enjoyably so. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to click the like button and share it with a friend or partner. Subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon for more content like this. As always, thanks for watching.